forget, you can hear the full-length, longer version wherever you get your podcasts. I like that AI. I think it's going to be a good tool to help, you know. Got a particularly hard arrangement, stick it in there. It might be a get one bit, right? That's a glass half full view yeah. of, of the coming storm of AI. Well, so, I, I just think same as the internet, innit? You know, there are weapons. There are start off as fucking weapons. Yeah, I think it's just a tool for the studio. And if you don't take it too far, it'll help. It will get took too far, believe me. Well, it's me. already taken too far. Have you heard K pop? If you've just joined us, we're already talking. I've got uh, Sean Ryder and Zach Starkey here because a mantra of the cosmos is their new band and they've come in and, you know, I, I, I've never been particularly edgy or cool or so I feel like I feel like the prefect what or the bollocks, head you of the you are, been edgy and cool. Well cool. All right, thank you. I'll take that. Yeah. I'll take that. Sarcastically motherfucking yeah. motherfucker. Yeah, bloody you're, you're yes. Like dry cool. <laughs> Thank you, Zach. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, we'll we'll use that as the trailer. Yeah. Your welcome. Welcome. Brock Bryden, dry cool. Zach, let, let's. There's an elephant in the room. Uh, Sean sure? has addressed it. You're wearing you know, a double away, denim. Well, that's ridiculous. No, you're not. <laughs> well, it, it's not even double denim, is it? It's a, it's a, it's a onesie. It's a, it's a, a denim onesie. Wow. Wow. Hey. Um, the words shaking and Stevens yeah, are hanging well, in the air. That's rubbish, John. Bob, <laughs> Bob, John, Rob. That's it. You call me. You call me Daniel if you want. <laughs> I've got a list somewhere. I knew you were on it. <laughs> <laughs> but what's that like when you I've if you have the call bottoms. of nature, though, Zach? I mean, I worry for you. Um, yeah. If, if well, you're a substantial which, call, it depends which part of nature's calling. Well, the substantial call. Well, it's got a zip. Yeah, yeah it's got but a zip I'm talking front, about if you need. Can I say that on here? If you, yeah. if you need to evacuate properly. Yes. Uh, uh, well, I have to take it off and it takes fucking ages. So you don't want to be in a public room. You don't want to be in a cubicle. I keep swearing, is that all right? Yeah, I mean, well, where's to it, hell is it? it or not? Oh, what, what is the swearing on this? Is it What, what time does it... No, what? listen, Pete, we, it, it's, it's, it's up to you, I think. I mean, we, it, It's on at three in the morning, is it? No, it's, it's on whenever <laughs> you want to listen to it. It's yeah, a podcast, yeah, isn't it's, it? Yeah, it's, well, you know, I mean, we... Uh, do, you, do, you, do you do a lot of editing? Editing for swearing? No, not really. No, no. no. Just no, be authentic. Yeah. Just, just be, just be who you are. I've met uh, Sean before because he came on. Would I lie to you? Would I lie to you? Yeah. But I never met you, Zach. <laughs> so you got this band, okay? So it's, it's the two of you. There are other notables in it as well. Yes, but it's yeah. essentially the two of you. Well, right? essentially four of us. Yeah. But we do all the work. But yeah, you're the ones who are out here spreading well, the good the word. <laughs> How? <laughs> yeah, well, you do, you do all the work. How did it come about? I know how it came about, but you t tell us how it came about. I mean, yeah, basically, Zach got in touch and said, if you want to do something, I went, well, fucking new band at 60 years old, why not? Are you 60? 61. 61? Oh, my God. Why not? 61. 61 with no eyebrows and no eyelashes and no fucking body hair. Yeah, but you're Sean Ryder, though, so it's OK. You can get you get everywhere for a bit faster. And you're the only Sean Ryder as well, aren't you? The only one of them. You're, you're so. the best Formula one. one. I haven't got ears. I mean, I've, I have actually looked. There, there are other Sean Riders. Yeah, but not really. They must be well cheesed off because well, yeah. they yeah. know they're not the best one. Yeah. How old are you, uh, have Zach? They've got annoying great hair. Yeah. Zach? How, how old am I? How old are you? You bastard. 58 last week. I'm the same. It's not good, is it? No. No. But, hey, we could be 61. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing is, right, mentally I'm better than ever. Yeah. It's just the body breaks down. Yes, it does. You know, I mean, I've got no thyroid. I've got no, don't produce testosterone. Once your thyroid goes, yeah. which mine's underactive, so underactive thyroid, if it was overactive, I'd be skinny like that and a whiz freak and I couldn't sit still. Underactive, you're lazy fat bastards. Right, you, you just... Right. So you're taking bigger supplements bigger. of testosterone? Well, well, I take yeah, I've been on the testosterone replacement for 15 years. What difference does it make? Well, if I didn't have the testosterone replacement, I would be. Really? I don't know. Really? Sleep, you have to come yeah. off it for a bit, don't you? Every well, year. No, what what happens is every now and then my blood thickens, so they have to take it off me, and when they take it off me, my body goes into shock, oh. and things like this happens. Okay full body alopecia, because I've been on testosterone supplements for a long time. They stop it, which they have to stop it, mm -hmm. because my blood's getting thicker. Mm -hmm. And when they stop it, your body just goes into shock. You you will age and feel... you. I mean, I've got arthritis all over the body's riddled with it as well. 
uh, and you feel that you don't feel any of this when you're on the testosterone because right. you you know you're right. shaking like a yeah. 25 year old yeah. and you're like well, when that's took off you were literally it's like some Star Trek uh, episode yeah. boom you turn into an old man how long not, do you not just to... physically but yeah. mentally oh, right oh, oh, oh. how long when when they take you off it how long are you off it for before you can go back on it a couple of months oh that's long he's doing gigs doing like gigs that, yeah. while you're off it yeah. that must be very hard oh it's terrible i can't deal with people as well but the thing is it's like look it's like a woman going through the menopause yeah. right it's it's all uh hormones yes. hormonal yeah so when my testosterone's took off me and i can't have it I will literally hide under the bed. I don't want to go out the front door. I'm frightened of my own shadow. Yeah. It's really? fucking terrible, really? mate. Yeah. You know, no wonder, you know, people, you know, either run to the to the booze and the drugs yeah. because it really is. It's, it, it, it's the male menopause. Yeah. When you say it's no wonder people go to the booze and the drugs, where are you in relation to booze and drugs now? When I'm at home, we don't have alcohol in the house. I mean, we've got still got teenagers in the house. So we don't want alcohol yeah. in the yeah. house with teenage yeah. girls, especially with ADHD. No ADHD is the same. Yeah. It's not one for one and one off for one. You know what I mean? You know, this stuff, like, if it's always affecting my memory. Even though I didn't find out, I, I wasn't diagnosed till 50 odd years yeah, old. I read that, yeah. When I was at school, while I was in the class, I would take things and understand it. As soon as, by the time the lesson had ended and I walked out that door, I couldn't remember anything. And then, and, and also, you know, ADHD with me, Went to promiscuous behaviour, uh, drugs, trouble, mm. you know, so, mm. you know, it all goes uh, hand in hand. So I have six kids and five of them have it. Now, they're lucky enough to have, you know, that's why I'm always working, because I've got to pay for their fucking therapy. And what's your, what's your background for, with your, I mean, I know your background, your family background, obviously. What is yours? What, what did your parents do? Well, the, the official jobs, my dad was a postman, my mum was a nursing nurse. So basically she was what we would probably now call an helper. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? We'd do... But my dad was a stand-up comedian. Was he? Yeah, and he was big. Jim Royal, my old bloke, you know, right. played yeah, the banjo, yeah. Yeah. played the accordion, yeah. and my mum was, uh, played the piano for the, uh, the, the nursery kids. Right, right. So you grew up in a... Creative environment, then, yeah, a, a performing there's environment. There's a lot more music yeah. back then, right? My dad said there's a lot more music back then. Like they'd put my dad on a chair, give him a brown ale, and make him do a song. Oh well, yeah, that's like, that, you you know, know, yeah, yeah, because people would make their own yeah, entertainment. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, there'd be a to. piano. You obviously grew up. Uh, if you don't know, Zach's dad is Ringo Starr, so you grew up always with. Dude, he grew up fucking rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, makes me look like you know, a, dysfunctional. a virgin got, budgie. You know, dysfunctional. It's got fun in the middle of it, isn't it? <laughs> right? And it really was great. It was great in our house. Like, it was just music. You should yeah. see some of the photos he's got when he's like, like a kid with Keith Spoon like sat on his bass or mm. sat on Keith's drums. And, yeah. Oh, it's some great photos. He was his babysitter. Yeah, he was his babysitter. Keith Moon, his babysitter. So Dad thought, who do we know who's he's responsible? Like, yeah. Who can look after Zach? Yeah. We don't have to worry. We, we can go out yeah. to have a nice night out. Keith Moon. After a couple of days, me like let him let me drink as much as possible. It's about eleven. And hang on a second. Uh, You're staying with Keith, yeah. and he's letting you drink. Yeah. Well, so did my nana and granddad. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about the sixties and seventies. Yeah. I mean, by the time I could walk, I was taught how to pour a yeah. beer. You know, I should say me. for the for yeah. the in the interest of balance, I, I'm the same age as Zach, so I grew up. Uh, late 60s through the 70s, uh, no one was giving me as much as you can drink. Well, didn't you know Mark Bone? <laughs> <laughs> we were never close. Right. How aware were you, Zach, that you were living an unusual life? Because I've interviewed a few people well, here. If you've never had an unusual life, you don't. Yeah, know. it's all normal. Yeah. Whatever your surroundings is, even yeah. if you're getting beaten but every you day. Were, the first day I went to school, I was like, what? I've got to go here every day. Every day. So our house is like full of pinball machines, pool tables and unlimited ginger ale. Mm. And now I've got to go here. But you were aware of who your dad was and what not, he did? Not, no, yes. Because I've interviewed just a few for the people. Record, just for the records that are lying around, because right. my mum and dad's record collection was probably one of the best of all time. Mm. And I was always going through it. My dad's like this, if I get my hands on you, I'll kill you. Like a normal dad. Yeah. That's how I think of him. Yeah. 
You know, yeah. Yeah. No, he's a beetle. Well, I'll well. take he's a, a beating. <laughs> he's a beetle as well. I see him on TV, and I get very emotional yeah. for what he achieved and how he changed. So much, you know. like a cultural pillar, like of unbelievable British, yeah. 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 World, not yeah. British world culture. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. phenomenal. Nineteen sixty-four refusing to play to um, segregated audiences in the south. Yeah, because it was real people. Nineteen sixty-four and ten years later, they're still going to Sun City. Isn't it? Uh, but good. you know what? Not the Beatles. The, the, even when the Beatles ended, mm. he was all still in the twenties. So to me, anyone in the twenties is a fucking kid. I know. Mm. Oh, well, that, that's a fact with the Beatles that blows your mind when you realise it. What they did the in 10 years and were, the age that it was. It's, it, doesn't, it just doesn't add. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, I know when we was going out and playing in Germany that our drummer and our keyboard player was still at school. Wow. And I was 18 or 19. Yeah. I started the band at 18. By the time these, you know, we're not even in the same fucking league, ballpark, anything, but, right. you know, I mean, that was how it still was in the 70s yeah. when, you know... Yeah. You could go yeah. working at 13. No one fucking bothered yeah. you. Did I, started, you I started gigging at 12, 13. Yeah. It's the only place I feel secure, actually, like up there. Where? Mm. Up on stage? Mm. Is that right? Yeah. I've been on it all, all, all my life. Um, the only time I met your dad so far was on Jonathan Ross years ago. He came into the makeup room and he said, Hello, everybody. He said hello to everyone. And then at the end of the night when he was leaving, he turned at the door and he said, Goodbye, everybody. And that is something I have done when I've been yeah. leaving case because yeah. you learn these little things. I thought, what a lovely thing. He made everybody feel yeah, thanks yeah. Very much for involved. That, yeah. Well, he's included. big enough and powerful Everyone's... enough to do that, isn't he? Mm. I'm not, but I still do it. Mm. Well, you are. Right. Let's talk Come about on. the band. How does it work in the studio? I know that you kind of freestyle. I go free. I mean, the great thing is, right, well... I will fuck off back to the hotel or wherever I'm staying and I'll structure things. Yeah. Right? But basically, by the time I get back in the studio, I just fuck it off and go freestyle. And I'll look at some lines that I've got and, and basically I can spit them out anywhere. And, and, and Zach's just, you know, like spending that much time in the studio that he can put me in the right order. If it wasn't you, I'd only been there half an hour. <laughs> and it's not because it's our job. It's because it's a great, joyful job. Because everything is freestyling. Everything is short. It's it's Eric Morecambe. Mm -hmm. All the right words, not necessarily in the right order. <laughs> and once you put them in the right order, it's it's it's. it's and yeah, I sent that song to Noel Gallagher, and text me back the British Bob Dylan. Ah, oh, wow, he, that's the, nice. So that particular example, you twisted my mouth, man, call the cops. Did that come to you in the studio? And no, it just that came, came to me in, in a, it, basically somebody used to run around the hacienda shouting, "You call the cops!" Right, right. And right. I twisted my melon, man. I got out of uh, the Steve McQueen documentary. Really? Yeah. I mean, there's a story about the Queen watching uh, meeting with a big, big bloke, uh, head of studios, and the head of studios, he's he's giving it to uh, Steve, and Steve just turns around to. And says, you're twisting my melon, man. Fuck you. Right. So had you remembered that and then you came to the studio or did you go into the studio with it written down? Well, as that thing is something use? that won't leave me alone. <laughs> twisting my melon, man. Fuck you. You know what I mean? That just yeah. won't go out of my head. I, I mean, I, I can be three days with just twisting my melon, man. Fuck you. Just that going around uh, yeah, in your in head. head. Yeah, Really, really, really. You know, just mad nutting lines. You're going to do live shows together, I We've assume. We've done a couple. We've done a few. Our first one was Glastonbury, wasn't it? Mm. That was the first one. Well, so we, we did a wall up in London. Yeah, at the box. Great venue. And right. we got this shit together really quickly. I mean, yeah. come on. We, 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 we've we almost got an album now. I mean... In, what, 12 and, tunes. 12 tunes. And, you know, it was uh, what it was done for a two-single deal or something. So uh, we just get in there and kept going. I mean, and then he, does his, he just gets in, in there and puts it all together. I'll sort of give him enough shit to play with. Yeah. Three or four takes, yeah, and then you put them together and they work. So that sounds. But when he's doing them, you know, think that's in no, no. <laughs> But well, we but... see, I'll repeat things as well. Sometimes, if you, you know, I repeat and repeat, so I, I, I make sure it's logged in. Mm. But yeah. if there is a theme. There's always a theme. Right. Well, we got we got stuck with animals. What have we got? Oh yeah, right. not, if this kangaroo keeps popping up, I have to edit him out. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we, I, it, it, yeah. It, you say something, then you go, and him and his kangaroo. <laughs> yeah, these, these things like get, <laughs> <laughs> getting there. Is that some mad slang, or, mad slang or something? No, it's a fucking kangaroo. 
So this all sounds kind of sort of chaotic, and then you you can you marshal it, Zach, and you you take what Sean's doing. How does that translate then when you're doing a tour, right? Or how is it going to translate? And you're going to be on stage at seven well, thirty. Well, by that and time, structure, you've and got, got verse, to... chorus, verse, chorus. So then it becomes yeah. a different thing. Yeah, we then it's a performance, it, and, it's, and it's, yeah, it's yeah, learned, yeah. and it's a but performance. But we don't do it like that. Then I have to have it on auto cue because I've yeah. never. I mean, the thing is, in the early days when the Monday started off. You know, before we had auto cue, you know, I had a book with all the lyrics or yeah. pieces of paper. You know, I mean, and, and just because of my condition, I mean, I'd start off the song lots of times with the second verse. You know, I, I could, I'd, I'd sing the song, but back to front and inside mm. out. Mm. Mm. You know, so, I mean, it's, it's still today, I've been singing the songs for fucking nearly 40 years, some of them, you know, and I still have to have them on auto cue. But you have a short term memory problem, don't you? I only need to see a line. Sometimes, you know, of the song and yeah. it'll click into place. There's some great bits. The film of the box, there's a sign, exit. And we got a song called X. Every time we say X, you go, exit. <laughs> right? Because you can see it. Yeah. Right. And then later on, you go, eggs, what are you laying? <laughs> it says X, what are you saying? <laughs> it's fucking great. <laughs> you mentioned the Hacienda. Yeah. You remember, um, uh, I was in a film, a 24-hour yeah, party Cock and people. Bull story. Can remember that. Not that one. Tw- he uh, was in tw- Cock and Bull. I was yeah. in Cock and Bull, but I was also in 24-hour party oh, people. Oh, yeah, I was, yeah. I played a small part, beavering away at Steve. Okay. I was a reporter in that. Was that an, What did you think of that film? Well, t- to me as a kid, that as somebody that, if I'd have gone along to the pictures and watched that movie, I'd have thought it was a really good, funny film. So that's what I have to say. It's a really good, funny yeah. film. The characters of Sean Ryder in that, couldn't even dress himself. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a caricature. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's a caricature of Tony. And do you forgive and the, and that the for his artistic license? And the good bit is a bollocks. Yes. Because it's like, yeah, it's so a... that's why I can see it as a punter. Hey, this looks funny. Yeah. Just shot, pull it up, shoot up, oh, go up. Just bollocks, bollocks right. out, you know. Okay. There is a story behind that. Yeah. But it was nothing like that. Okay. You but, know, but, but, you, but you're cool with that because you think it's artistic license. Absolutely, It's, it's yeah, an course. expression. Okay, yeah. okay. I can see that. Yeah, okay. You know, and Winterbottom does a good job on him. He either. certainly does. Yeah. What about Steve, though? Because he's often disappointing. Isn't well, he? Steve's Steve fucking cool. shit, isn't he? He's I mean, he's, I've never seen he? him in anything fucking decent. What? I when mean, is he going to do a good piece of work? That's what I say. Yeah. When is he going to learn from the master? I think he's uh, great. What? <laughs> You just hold, you just you just yeah. hold that opinion yeah. right there. Boy, he's an absolute fucking genius. <laughs> he's absolutely oh, Steve glorious. Steve Coogan. Yeah. yeah. What did you think, Got Steve it. Davis? Who are you talking about? He's not as good as he was. Steve McQueen. I thought. Steve oh, McQueen. No, We're back no, to no, him. No, no. Um, Where did you grow up, Zach? Uh, all over the place. Lots of different places. All England, but yeah. London country, London country. Did that Bit suit? Did that, that suit you? Um. You're going to say it's all It was all great moving to London in 1979. Same year, Rude Boy came out in a Clash movie. And it was fucking just like it. It was just like it. Wandering around Camden and, that, and it was it was the movie that I've been watching because I love all that music. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and you move out to the country. Obviously, it's hard to find musicians and that to form a band you know, mm. in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So just take what you can get. So I'm playing a lot of bands in Bracknell. Bracknell. Around that, those sort of satellite towns. And yeah. Like Reading and that. You know? Yeah, yeah. But any band, like, I suppose loads. So you're loads. growing up rock and roll, you make your own rules. Yeah. But you've played with, a few, you, you, you've you drummed for The Who a lot, 28 you? years. 28 years? Yeah. I look a lot younger than this. I fell like. off the stool the other night. Yeah, I went off backwards. <laughs> off the Did you ride. seriously? <laughs> we, introduced, we introduced the orchestra there behind me. Yeah. Right, so the whole American tour... Got this stool. You see, my dad's stool in Get Back. He, he invented that. You have a back on it to lean right. back. Right. Get back. So he's <laughs> maybe inspired the title. Oh, his yeah. seat. Yeah. You know? So you can lean back in it like that when you've got to wait five hours for them to work out the chords. You know? <laughs> right. And so I don't want to get in. I don't, you know, applaud the, the orchestra to serve some applause. And I don't want to stand up and get in the way. So I started doing this leaning back. Yeah. Going like that. Right. But the O2 arena, the legs of the stool were at a different angle, like that. And I went like that, and whoa! And just fucking off the drum riser. On Everyone top. thought he was well, dead. Off, yeah, off the yeah. riser, so that's uh, a bit of a drop. It then. was a bit of a drop, but I was in this chair with a back on it, and it saved my spine. 
Oh, man, that you could and have I landed on, the, I landed on the deck and we're laughing our fucking heads off. And I said, right, let's just stay here for a bit. Stay here <laughs> yeah. for a bit. Right, Milk it. Get the fuckers nervous. Uh, right, uh, right, uh, and and uh, Roger says, is he all right? Pete goes, I think he's overdosed. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 And uh, can we get in? And the tour manager actually called an ambulance and then I got up. Like, and the most painful thing about it was I was I'd in ears in and they were... Oh, what they're they... hardwired. Yeah. Ooh. And they're like... Tearing Ooh. me fucking ears out. No. You know? un, 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 unwire me now. <laughs> how did the how did the gig with the Who come about? <sighs> like that. Like that. That's yeah. what he did. He was just stood there one day in Wardour Street and he went like that no, and, you, it, and he pulled you, pulled you over. When yeah. I was a kid, when I was about seven, I liked Mark Bolan a lot. Yeah. I learned to play the guitar. Right. Going through my parents' record collection, I come across a record called Meaty Beaty Big and Bouncy. Yes. Which I'd recommend to anyone. It's a, I've heard that. It's a compilation of their 60s hits. Right. It's fantastic. Yeah. Everyone's a winner. It's a huge album. Uh, is it? Yeah, me, yeah, me, it's, me, it's like yeah, a compilation yeah, I, of the singles. I used yeah. to have it. And I look on the back and it's, wow, it's that dude that, when we does a party, he comes up and hangs out in our room and feeds the hamster and plays... Monopoly. So and this is hang, Keith, Keith Moon. Yeah, and he's hanging, hangs, hangs out with us. And then goes, yeah. Oh, did, he, did he eat the hamster? No, no, no. That was no, Freddy's stuff. Yeah. No, and Freddy my dad, that, my dad goes, that's because he's on your level. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. 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 Right, so, um, anyway, so, so you'll see I switched this. to drums that day. And I want to play the drums. Because you saw that, that I, compilation. I listened, so I listened to it and it, it, was, was, like, it was like, yeah. a fuck, it was like drumming, the drumming is just so ah, exciting. Wow. Yeah. And my dad gave me one lesson, and then come in the next day, and he goes, "Try this." I said, "I can do that." He goes, "You're on your own, mate." See, oh. he'd not tried to get you into the drums before that. No, but he'd no, given he you a be, guitar. He, though. he wanted me to be a doctor and a lawyer, so I could do both for him for nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so that that got you into drumming, but but nonetheless, that doesn't then entitle you to become the Who's drummer. No, but two years later, I was in. Well, you've got to be fucking good, have not you? Yeah, yes, two, two you years. Got la- him. I mean, then he is. He's fucking. Genius. Two years later, I got in a band. Twelve. Started doing gigs. Right. Did that all my life. It, I've been you, loads of bands, yeah. like fucking millions of bands. I've been in millions of bands. Take anything that comes up. Because I was a, a t- teenager in a world of 22, 23-year-olds. Mm-hmm. I was like 13. It was amazing. To, like, oh, so wow. you are playing in bands at that age? Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm 12, 30. Yeah. And they're in their 20s. Okay. That's interesting. And how, many, a, uh, how many uh, old levels did you come out with, Zach? I was doing a gig in Manchester that day and I just couldn't actually make it. <laughs> yeah. But I'd not been to school for a year, so it wasn't going yeah. I wasn't gonna get anywhere really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So well, right. nowadays it's very important, but back in the seventies it wasn't. No, I've got to say Neil Aspinall, who features in yeah. Get Back, obviously, was a great champion of mine. And he used to say, You don't need school, right? Yeah. You're a drummer, it's obvious. Like, if my dad knew that, he would have killed him. When the Happy Mondays hit, how did your parents react to that? Well, my dad was made up. Look, I got what my dad didn't get. Yeah, because he wanted to be. My dad's life really did begin at forty, through you. Yeah, right. You know, right. Right. I mean, he'd never been out of the country before that. None of them had. So, did he then travel with you? Or well, with my, the band? my old bloke really was. He was our first manager because we right. we we got our. My dad stole all our gear, you know, amps and. For, not from you, well, for not you. For he stole it from, yeah, you know, from like yeah. labour clubs and, did he, did and all that. Really? Yeah, all, right. the, all the all Irish clubs, this and that. My dad was a magpie, and he'd take them, and we got this. He, you know, he bought some. Yeah, but you know, and then when we started the band, he set it all up. All right. So my dad at the start was our roadie, right. our driver, you know, our sound man. All right. The lot. Yeah, right. And what happened was, as we then started. Making a bit of an impression. Yeah. We needed a proper manager. Right. So I had to make the business move of oh. sacking my dad. Oh no. Okay. So that's when Phil Sachs, the uh, jeans guy from the markets, came in. Phil okay. Sachs ended up being the AR man at Factory. But right, Phil, right. Phil, we knew Phil from the market stalls. Mm. You know, we bought, bought jeans off him and uh no, all sorts. With your dad, then, when you sacked your dad, what did that do to your relationship? Well, my relationship in my, with my dad was was fucked up for a long time. And when the Mondays finished in 1983, 1993, and then by 1995, I got Black Grape together. Yeah. So I gave my dad another job. Ah. You know, it, 
So, you know, that and, and actually Black Grape was bigger than the Mondays. You know, it was American money, it was a bigger thing. You know, we, we, we got the number one with Black Grape. We didn't get the number one with the Mondays until we sold more records, but the Mondays had become more iconic. Yes, mm. yes. You know, so yeah. uh, anyway, my dad was gutted and he took it fucking, you know, but I had to sit down to him and say, Dad, he's a businessman. Yeah. We need a businessman. Yes. So my dad then became the sound man. Okay. But then when we got bigger, I had to bring a sound man. Proper sound man. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we ended up getting me, me dad made this, you know, this laminate that said Chief Rody. Um, so uh, we have to um, we have to wrap up, but before we do, are there dates in the diary live dates or is that GB's? No, we've got to finish our record. We've got to finish the, the whole album. Yeah. Well, you think you've got 12 tunes already. Yeah, yeah. So... Well, I'm putting the Mondays to bed for two years. Because basically we've been back with They're Mondays. Exhausted. Well, what it is? <laughs> You're going to tuck them in. <laughs> you know what it is? I mean, we you know we've constantly been at it again since the original band. We brought all the original band back together in 2012. Right. You know we toured all over the place and done. Be- you know so what I want to do now is I want to do Mantra mm. and I want to push Black Grape right. because, like I said, the Mondays became iconic because yeah. we. Would it say so? You know, we've got another black grape album out. The last one was 2017. So I want to, so we'll give the Mondays a rest for a couple of years while we do Mantra mm. and, and black grape. What about you, Zach? I don't know at the moment. Mm. I had a mad call from Billy Gibbons of ZZ Top about forming a duo. Did you? Right, with a computer. That's right. far out. No, dude, that's yeah, it'd be amazing. Be it'd be dude, amazing, isn't it? it? You know. Yeah. Oh, really nice to talk to you guys. Thank, thanks for thanks for doing this. I'm just waiting to see some of the moody kippers I've been pulling on here while we've filmed it. I forget. <laughs> moody kippers, faces. Yeah, uh, facial expressions. Zach Starkey, Sean Ryder. Thank you very much. The interview thanks, is it's going to pleasure, finish mate. in three, two, one. It's finished. Run around now. Run around now. <laughs> <laughs>